Hi. Sorry. Ow. Oh, I'm moving my cat. <laughs> um, we'll see if anyone shows up. <laughs> Hi, Serena and Ornito. <laughs> um, I am going live every day this week to uh, to celebrate that my course, Enamel Pins 101, is opening up on Friday for the public. Oh, I'm really excited to uh, to do it. Hey, May. <laughs> uh, I thought it would be fun to just come on and talk about like my latest videos. I was really proud that I've been posting regularly. <laughs> uh, so I thought it'd be fun. And today, hey, oh, there's so many sweet people. Ooh, okay, so I will be taking questions at the very end. I'm just gonna holler about uh, different types of enamel pins. That's what I'm gonna talk about today. So if you have any questions at all, there should be a little question box down at the bottom. And then I will check that um, at the end, but in terms of what app I use to draw and color, I like Procreate a lot. Uh, that's what I use on my iPad, and also pens and pencils and crayons. <laughs> um, so today I'm going to be talking about just the different types of enamel pens. Back to basics, but I've got some really cool examples of stuff that people have been doing lately. Ooh, so I thought I would um, kind of show them off a little bit because I think. Uh, pen making has really, I don't know, expanded and uh, it's just evolved over the last few years. So I think that's pretty fun. So soft enamel versus hard enamel is something that people ask all the time. And I just wanted to show you some examples. These are some soft enamel pens. They're all different. So this little guy was the very first. Can this like zoom? Ooh, we'll see. Um, this guy was the very first pin I ever made. Uh, my friend Jessica of the pin department helped me out with it. And I don't know if you can see the detail, but soft enamel is so good for detail. We've got one by um, Kate Gabrielle right here. And this is one by Tiny Deer Studio and Lisa Chow. Look how cool that is. So soft enamel is made by um, stamping your metal and then they just use a little machine and fill in all the little holes so you can kind of see the dip in it so they just fill that with enamel and then they fire it and then you're golden Ugh, I don't look at my terrible manicure manicure um, but uh, soft enamel is really cool because you can use different colors you can dye the enamel different colors and make it part of the design, which is something I think Lindsay of M and Sprout does really well. So you can see here, she's made this one pink and um, she's done all kinds of cool stuff with this one. This one is, I think it's a silver, yeah, or it might be black nickel. Sometimes black nickel is different from factory to factory. But this one's by Nina of Me So Happy. And you can see, I love how chunky she makes her soft enamel pins. They look so cool. But you can also, like Tiny Deer Studio, get crazy detail. Like, look how teeny, teeny, tiny. I put this one in my video, but I don't think I really showed how teeny, teeny, tiny it got. <laughs> um, the detail is just amazing. And, um, and this one is by Tokyo Bunny, so you can also see how much detail, like just the individual little bobas, like it's crazy. And another fun thing is the rainbow metal is only in soft enamel. So if you want to get rainbow metal stuff done, then um, soft enamel is the way to go for that. And this one is by Sarah Cosico. Look how amazing this Tonks is. I think it is so cool the color she picked to really complement the rainbow. I think that can be hard. Some rainbow pins look a little funky, but when you pick the right colors, it looks awesome. So another thing you can do with soft enamel, if you don't like the look of it being like dipped, like the indent of the um, stuff, you can put epoxy on top of that. So that's what this one is here. This one's by Pink Owlet. And you can see it's got a shiny flat finish. Same with this one's another one by M and Sprout. And this one's by Set. So you can see how they use different colors of the actual metal and then um, incorporated uh, the epoxy to go on top. 
which I think is really cool. And that's what I did. This is my very first, um, like epoxy glitter, like incorporating glitter in my pens. So this catacorn, which is my most knocked off design, hooray. Um, this one has, and I really want it to zoom in. Ooh. But this one has epoxy on top too. But I wasn't super happy with how this one ended up turning out, so I ended up going with hard enamel. So I wanted to show you just the difference between so you can see the level of detail I got in this one versus this one. I really think when you're doing hard enamel um, that sizing up is a good idea because sometimes hard enamel, which I'll talk about in a second, um, you can not lose detail, but it gets a little bit in the, the way they make it, uh, the lines get a little bit bigger. So you can see the difference in how I sized up with the soft enamel with epoxy and the glitter versus a hard enamel with the glitter, which I think is really cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip it over and talk about some hard enamel pens which I think are super fun. Now, I don't, yeah, hard enamel is a bit of a darker color usually. That can happen too, like in the polishing. Um, but I wanted to show you some examples of, you can get detail in hard enamel. So I wanted to show you this one I did with Steph um, and a more sweet little froggo. And so there's definitely detail in this one. And this one is my daffodil from my pin club. I think I still have a few available. Let me scoot up because I really want you to see. There are teeny tiny kittens in this pen. So you can get detail with hard enamel. You just have to be very careful with the manufacturer you choose and the way you communicate and do your line work. But I wanted to show you that because I love, I love hard enamel. And with hard enamel, I think it's easier to do um, screen printing. So this is an example of screen printing. I had this whole design. Anything that doesn't have an outline around it needs to be screen printed, which I think is fun. Hey guys! <laughs> and this one too, I think is really smart by Lindsay. Can you tell I love Lindsay of Emmons Brown? <laughs> she's probably really annoyed, like, oh my God, she's so obsessed with me. <laughs> but look how great she used this black nickel, right? And screen printing to create different elements in this pen. And I think that is just so gorgeous. And that's something that is just done flawlessly with hard enamel. I think it's beautiful. And then we've got a silver one, just as an example from Miss Kika. She's so pretty. And this is one that I did a couple of years ago with my husband. And, um, <laughs> and I really like incorporating the metal in the design so you can see how shiny it is and the metal is the actual shell with the details in it. So I think it's really fun when people kind of think of clever ways to use the metal um, to do it. Same with like this um, one over here and the hair and tongs. I just think it's really cool using all the elements and with hard enamel. And this is the same with soft enamel too. But um, I think this one by uh, Fahima of Unicorn Crafts and Courtney of Iggy Star Pop, they are angels, but look at all the cool elements. They got special like die struck um, molding done here. You've got cutouts here. You've got screen printing. This one is everything. I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. All the elements they were able to include and it just looks flawless. So, so pretty. Um, go ahead, if you have any questions, pop them in the little question box and then I will get to the question boxes at the very end. Um, so I just wanna talk about, the, the hard enamel is made by, they kind of, they make the mold, right? And then they fill it with enamel and then they polish it down. So that's why the, um, Sometimes the lines can be a little bit thicker in the polishing process. But if you're really clear with your manufacturer, then you can um, then you can make sure everything looks really, really good. So those are some of my favorite soft enamel, hard enamel. Most of these are hard enamel, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, and when you're first starting out, you can definitely try both and see what you think. My Alien was my first one um, and 
I really think uh, I decided to try some hard enamel next and those just I think they did better for me yeah. and then you can also kind of switch up and try different colors which I think is really fun so for my um, my little double dip cat cream tone pen do I have one of those yeah so for this one that I did I had um, for the pink and white version, I had it done in silver and gold. So you can test and you can ask your manufacturer if you want to do uh, one or the other. And then I found that my gold sold out so much faster than my silver. So that's just kind of what I stuck with. So I think it's really fun. So if you do that, if you split colors between um, like different color metals and you can do different colors of enamel inside, then you can really get a lot of bang for your buck with your first kind of orders of enamel pins. So now, that was really fast. <laughs> I have a whole video about it too, so you can check out my YouTube channel if you want to see even more in depth and like kind of how they're made and examples of what to do and, and you know, just even more examples of cool pins. So uh, definitely check that out. And now I'm going to check my, um, wait, I'm going to do a screenshot. Ah! Okay. Ah! Okay. Now I'm going to check the question boxes. So if you have any questions, let me check through here too. If you have any questions at all, I'm just hanging out and I'm here to, uh, to answer whatever questions you have. I've got my, let's see. Yeah. What app do you use? I like procreate a lot. That one's really fun for me. Ooh. Um, and let's see what else we've got. My friends. Okay. Stan Ovino Studios said, I want to ask, I'm getting uh, my first pins made. What's the best way to get the news around, like advertise for it? So Instagram is kind of the best way, I think. And I do have um, my live webinar that I'm doing on Friday. So if you want to register for that, I'm gonna have registration links in my stories so you can register and see it. I'm actually gonna come on and um, hang out live. I'm gonna have a chat in it and then I'm gonna do a whole Q&A after. So if you have any questions about just kind of the stuff that I'm, I talk about in the webinar or if you have any questions about uh, the Enamel Pins 101 course, you can ask me there, I will be there live. The, um, the webinar has been super helpful for a lot of people. I've got a lot of super actionable stuff just to get more eyeballs on your work and, um, and really, you know, get it out there. Let's see. When finding your manufacturer, what do you look for specifically? I have a whole video about that too. <laughs> There's a lively debate in the comments about whether or not people should share manufacturers, which is really funny to <laughs> look through sometimes. Um, but, I just like to make sure they are, they seem reputable, um, if they've been in business for a long time, if they have presences in different places, like if they're on like Global Solutions or um, AliExpress or they have their own website, make sure all that info kind of matches up, addresses are correct, you can Google Earth it, you know, see if it's actually a place that exists uh, where they say it does. And then look for different certifications and things like that. And AliExpress is really good about that, making sure that it is a good um, working environment for their uh, employees and they have like the right kind of, um, like when they're doing waste disposal and stuff like that, it's, it's not terrible for the environment and stuff like that. So plating can be difficult. So finding places like that is, and, making sure that they have IP protection, so your intellectual property. So the first one I found specifically called out that they you know, would only use your mold for you and they would never do anything else with it and only you can order your pins. And I really appreciated that as someone who has to deal with bootlegs a lot. So those are just some little tips about finding a manufacturer. There's also a Facebook group. Um, I think it's just called uh, Pin Manufacturers PMR, Pin Manufacturer Review Group, and they have a lot of stuff, um, and again, people might not feel comfortable uh, sharing their favorites, but there is like a list of ones that like not to do, so that can help too. Let's see, more questions, let's see, how do you narrow down colors for a brand palette? Is pastel better than saturated colors? I don't think any colors are better than another, it just depends on um, 
If it's for a brand palette, like if you're branding, I don't know. I like to pick like one main color and then I pick the, uh, the secondary colors off of that to kind of complement um, what it is. I don't think there's, I mean, my main brand color is a super bright pink. <laughs> and for my Enamel Pins 101, when I was branding that one, I made it like a really bright, kind of vibrant teal. So I think bright colors are fun. Um, I think it really just depends on you. I think you can do, my kind of main rule of thumb is having the one main color, two secondaries, and two neutrals. So you have five colors to choose from. Um, but that is... Yeah, <laughs> there's so much you can talk about branding, but always pick kind of one color and have that be your thing, I think, um, is my favorite way to do it, at least. Um, what about Adobe Illustrator? What about Adobe Illustrator? Um, I have a video about that, too. I just put it up where I kind of walk through my process for vectoring in Adobe Illustrator. I love it. I am actually in the process of working on a course <laughs> just about that. So you can see all of the different tips and tricks that make it easier to make enamel pins in Adobe Illustrator. So that's exciting. Uh, but yeah, I love it. Definitely check out my YouTube channel if you have any questions about Illustrator. I have a very basic video where you can watch me just go through and vector an entire pin so you can see my whole process with that pin and then I have a few tips and tricks with the um some tools that I like to use so I hope that's helpful let's see any more questions Hi. let's see do you think using Alibaba to find a manufacturer is a bad choice no I don't think it is I think um Alibaba is like the easiest place to start to look and you know, my manufacturers are on there too. So uh, it's, I think it's a standard place to look. It's just making sure that like, if they are using photos that you know are taken from another artist, that's a red flag. <laughs> um, if they, I mean, that's the biggest red flag. Um, if they haven't been in business for a long time, if they don't have a lot of reviews from other companies that have used them, um, yeah, I mean, I think AliExpress is totally fine to go looking, at least just to see for your options, you know what I mean? But in the course, I do share my actual manufacturers. <laughs> and they have been helpful for the students that have already been through. Let's see. Oh, my pen collection is phenomenal. Thank you. I have a ton that are not even up. Um, I'm going to do a live thing eventually where I, like, put more boards up and, like, reorganize because... I've got some in Eda bags. I've got some just in a giant bowl on my desk. It's a problem, but it's a good problem to have, I think. Why are you so awesome, man? You're too nice to me. <laughs> um, check out check out maybe art stuff because she's super cute. Um, let's see. Yay! Are there any more questions? I don't think anyone used a little question block. Maybe it's not working. I don't know. Well. Um, if there are no more questions, oh, oh, sorry for all the questions. Don't ever be sorry for questions. <laughs> That's how everybody learns. Let's see. Do you think backing cards should be more simple rather than complicated? I think that depends on you and your brand and what you want to do. I don't think they should distract from the pin. I don't think people should, uh, like lose your pin in the backing card. I think it should definitely stand out. But if you have like kind of a maximalist <laughs> um, aesthetic in your stuff, definitely go for it and make like a bonkers um, backing card. And if you're more simple, then just go for a simple backing card. I'm actually going to redo my packaging um, this week, hopefully. <laughs> so um, I'm excited to do that and, and try something new again, kind of going back to what I did before. But um, I went super simple this time and I think I want to go a little bit further, <laughs> go back to what I did before. So yeah, I think it just depends on your brand and what feels good for you and what shows off the pin the best because you want that to be what stands out. Let's see. Raven Reader says, what sort of boards do you use to show off your pins? I have started collecting pins. I want to show them off. Your stuff's awesome, by the way. Oh, from the UK. Hey, uh, these are trivets from Ikea. They come in a package of three for like four bucks and I just nail them straight to the wall. There is uh, nothing exciting about these. <laughs> I found them at, uh, at Ikea one day and I just like that they were thick enough because a lot of cork boards, 
for like work and stuff. They're just not thick enough to uh, deal with enamel pins. So yeah, it's my Kia trivets and nail them to the wall and it'll look awesome. <laughs> Let's see, how long did it take you uh, before your shop was uh, able to be your full-time income? Man, um, I've had my shop for a long time since 2006 and it was a side hustle for a while but I think it was just a few months with once I kind of offered enamel pins because I was on maternity leave for a long time before I even offered enamel pins and as soon as I started offering them it was just kind of gangbusters after that I was really um I was about to say I was really lucky, but I worked really hard. <laughs> I worked really hard on my designs and, and my marketing and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think it was a few months until it was, like, truly my full-time. I was home before then. My husband has a full-time job, and I was a stay-at-home mom with my son. But having that additional income <laughs> in the family was a huge deal, uh, for me at least. So, um, yeah, yeah, just a few months after I started with enamel pins like they were I was doing them full time before then like my pins and prints and stuff like that um, but it wasn't it was still my main income but not a huge income it wasn't like after I after I um, started offering enamel pins so let's see what else <laughs> Ikea what can't they do I don't even know they're the best let's see why did you choose a newsletter and email than Patreon? Um, Patreon is kind of the same thing for me, like Kickstarter. I, it gives me a lot of anxiety just thinking about keeping up with it. <laughs> um, I, it just seems like another layer of the job, and I already have like basically three businesses I'm running with the retail shop, the wholesale, and um, my courses. <laughs> so um, adding Patreon, I don't know, maybe it's just my perception, but it seems like a lot. So I love my newsletter. The newsletter, I highly, highly recommend getting an email newsletter because they are just invaluable. Like you own your newsletter, you know, you own those email addresses and we don't own Patreon, we don't own Instagram, you know, we don't own Facebook, so they can change their rules whenever they want, but we can email our people whenever we want. They're the ones that decide if they want to stay or go, and most of the people who stay on your email list are like your ride or dies, and so they're always down to support you, so I am 100% um, on board with emails. Um, let's see. Let's see, a few months, you know what? It's all in your own time. <laughs> there is no set path for everyone. And May, you are incredible. So um, it, it's all in your own time. There's no right or wrong path that anyone is on. You know what I mean? Sometimes it takes people longer than others. There are people who are just started after I did and do twice as much as me. You know what I mean? Like I watched them just absolutely skyrocket. I'm like, what am I doing? But the comparison game does nothing for anyone. So everyone is on their own path and you don't know what's going on in anyone else's life, what anyone else has going on behind the scenes, um, any kind of support other people have behind the scenes, stuff like that. So everyone has their own path. Do not compare yourself to anyone else's path. <laughs> Never, ever, ever. Let's see. Any tips for simplifying art to better fit a pen format? I think when you work in Illustrator, as long as you remember that everything goes in its own little kind of circle, you know, everything goes in its own space, then that can help with um, kind of figuring out how to simplify stuff. It really depends on the artwork. Uh, the original artwork, but as long as you realize that every color needs a space to be, then that can kind of help simplify things. And then when you play around with Illustrator, I think it'll get easier as, as time goes on. It's kind of hard to say without seeing the, uh, the actual art that you're working on. Let's see. Have you disclosed how much the webinar will cost? The webinar is free. <laughs> um, the uh, PINS 101, the course enrollment is going to have a special early bird price. And you will find that out 
at the webinar. <laughs> and if you are um, signed up to my email list. So I'll be sending emails out uh, reminding people and um, sending people to the webinar too. So if you sign up for all of that, you'll find all that information out on Friday for sure. Let's see, any tips for selling at pin, pin selling pins at fairs and cons? Um, I have a video about that too. <laughs> uh, my YouTube channel, I actually sat down with my bestie, uh, Libby from Lux Cups, and she does tons and tons of shows. She does fairs, cons, trade shows, all that stuff. I have scaled back on doing those just because I have sun and it takes away from the weekends. Plus I'm an introvert. So like I get real keyed up for the weekend and then I have to like take a lot of time to, <laughs> to recoup after, uh, conventions and stuff. So she is definitely the one to learn from, from that. And we have like this giant hour long <laughs> Uh, video talking about all kinds of stuff from setups and like checklists of stuff to bring and like what to say to people all of that so definitely go to my YouTube and check that out let's see bite-sized treasure says she highly recommends um, the enamel pins one on course thank you <laughs> I'm so glad it's been helpful I'm gonna share a lot of awesome um, pins that people from uh, Enamel Pins 101, the course, have actually made in the last few months. And you guys, we have a private Facebook group. It's super fun. Everyone in there is incredible and super supportive. And I just put a little thing like, hey, let me see what you've made in the last month. I'd love to share it. And oh my gosh, I almost cried yesterday. Like there's so many gorgeous pins that everyone is making. And I'm just so proud of everyone. Everyone's so talented. It's the best. Ugh, I love that group so much. <laughs> Um, let's see, how does your newsletter work? I use, I started out with MailChimp and I talk about newsletters in the webinar too. So if you want even more information about that, sign up. Cause I have a whole section just kind of on what to send and, um, like not feeling bad about it and stuff like that. Um, people tend to have a lot of mindset issues with sending emails to people. And I know I did in the beginning, but just send an email. It's fine. Uh, I started with MailChimp and I use one called ConvertKit right now, but that's just because it's easier for courses. I don't recommend it if you're just selling products. It's kind of clunky. Um, but if you're selling products like pins and stuff, then I definitely think MailChimp is a great place to start. And I just do, I do weekly newsletters for um, mostly talking about like what's going on in the shop, if I've had new stuff, if I have a new video, stuff like that. And, um, and then if I have sales and things and then random, um, discounts and stuff for like exclusively for my subscribers and things like that. But I go into more detail on that in the webinar for sure. So definitely, um, I will have links around to register for the webinar on Friday and I'll have a big old Q and A after that as well. Let's see. And May says, I also recommend the course. It's incredibly helpful, especially to the community, to, to the Facebook community um, that Becky put together for it. Thank you. I swear the Facebook community is like my favorite part of everything. Everyone is so incredible there. Um, everyone answers each other's questions. There's no judgment. It's, it's just a really safe, encouraging place to be. I love it. Let's see. I love your YouTube videos. I watched a lot of them before I ordered my first pen. Yay, I'm glad they were helpful. That's why I made them. Let's see. Yes, and pens is in the course too and loves it. <laughs> they say, listen to what Becky says about Instagram. <laughs> I like being on Instagram, you guys. I'm on it a lot. <laughs> Let's see. I have a question, Kaylee Bambi. Um, when starting your pin business, should you register your business with the town you live in before you start selling your product? Okay. I actually have this inside the course too. I have a whole kind of breakdown. It is different for each state. So even the tax collecting stuff, um, county clerks and all of that are different from state to state. Um, but I do have a breakdown inside the course about it. You do want to register with your business, especially if you have, um, your business with your kind of local, like your state or your county or whatever they um, require because they want your taxes. 
they want your sales tags. That's, that's kind of the biggest thing. And if you are doing business under a name that is not your own. So like if I was doing, you know, if I just called it Becky Helms or Becky Helms designs, then I wouldn't need to do like a doing business as a DBA, um, or an assumed name. Some people could, they call it different things to each state by state. Um, but I had to register as the pink samurai. So, um, I could get checks and stuff written out to the business and then I could also do something with it. You know what I mean? It has to be associated like the pink samurai had to be associated with me. So you definitely want to make sure you know where to pay your sales taxes. <laughs> and if you have some kind of assumed name or something different, then you have to file that with um, your local government. And I do have a whole, there's a whole thing in my, um, Pins 101 course about it. Cause I get a lot of questions about that too. <laughs> um, so hey there. Um, oh, someone used the question box. Okay. Hold on. Let's see what it is. Let's see. Can I do it? Can I do it? Oh, okay. Let's see. Do you plan on making more pins? Yes. I do monthly pins for uh, my pin club. And I've got a Christmas collection coming out, and I think that's the last big <coughs> batch of things. Um, all the Halloween stuff is out, which is exciting. And then I've got my uh, like my holiday pins, and then that will be it for the new editions for the rest of the year. So, ooh, it's exciting. And then I start planning 2020. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, I did it right. Oh yeah. How do you get to the question block? Uh, I think there's a question box down at the bottom. Okay, here's one. Oh, why do you like news brothers? But I already answered that. <laughs> I'm not very good. I haven't been live in a while. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you have a kitty near you right now? My cat is trying to eat my hair because I washed it. Yes, I do have a kitty with me right here. He's, I don't know if you can see the lump. Oh, charcoal. Oh, good morning here. He's napping and I'm gonna bug him. Oh, he's mad. Come here. There's a boy. Okay, there's a charcoal bean. He's not showing you his face, he's being coy. There we go. <laughs> he's always, just assume that any video I do, he's sitting right next to me and touching myself. You got so many hearts, Turks. Yeah. He's like, I don't care, put me down. <laughs> Good morning from Vancouver. Hi. Ooh, let's see. Do I like Studio Ghibli? Yes, I do. I have an entire board of Ghibli pens just out of frame. I would move the phone around, but I'm terrified I'm going to drop it, and it's in a really good spot right now. So there's cat hair just everywhere now. Um, let's see. Uh, not a question, but I want to say you're an inspiration. I love everything you do. You're so sweet. Everyone's so nice. I love Instagram. <laughs> you guys are way too nice to me. I'm just a nerd who likes pins and wants to help people make pins. <laughs> That's all. Let's see. What's going on? Do I have another one? It says I have another question. I don't think, I don't think this question box is really very helpful. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I don't think we need it. Oh, Turkle. He's so sleepy. Right before this, he was like running around and just knocking everything over in the studio. And I was like, please don't do that while I'm live. <laughs> oh, okay. So that was talked about soft enamel pins and hard enamel pins. Well, hard enamel pins. <laughs> most of those. Let's see. What type of photo do you think gets the most engagement? That is different for everyone. What you want to do is go into your analytics and then, um, look when you look at your content you can switch and check out um which of your particular photos have the most engagement so you can look at it from engagement you can look at likes you can look at clicks and stuff like that and um to see what people engage with most for you um always check out the like the most engagement bit so you can see like how many people commented the most. There's all kinds of, there's like just this little scrolling thing um, where you can sort through your different types of photos. For me right now, people really like the pictures 
that are like um, just a pile of pins. Those tend to get a lot of engagement for me. Uh, but I also think it depends on the call to action that you have. So if you have a, a CTA, so basically just the question um, or action you ask people to take in your um, caption. So you can be like, you know, double tap if you love Halloween. Everyone's gonna do that. So you're asking them to like it. Or comment below with your favorite Halloween candy. That's a good one and I'm totally gonna use that soon. Um, uh, you know, comment below with your top five emojis, you know, um, anything to get people talking in the comments because you learn about them and you have fun and it gets more engagement. So it's fun for everybody. So I think it depends on the type of photo for sure. So you can, you know, replicate that kind of photo that people really like. Um, and the CTA that you use. So I think look at those two things when you're determining what has the best engagement for you, because what works for me might not work for you. Um, it depends on your audience and what they're into. Let's see. How do you recommend people grow their account and how to acquire a following? Come to my webinar on Friday. Um, I'll put links as soon as I'm done with this, I'll put links to register for the webinar um, because I will be there. I'm going to pop on live and then the webinar will start. And then um, I think last time I like lost my voice by the time. I felt, <laughs> I was like so burned out from like actually teaching it <laughs> that I like couldn't really spend a lot of time on the questions. So, um, so I will have the webinar play and then I will come on, I'll be in the chat the whole time and I will also be answering questions at the end of that. So I go into yeah, so much detail on how to grow your following and all of the stuff I did uh, for that in the webinar on Friday. And I will have it up for a replay, so if you can't make it live, that's fine. As long as you register, you will get the emails to know about um, the replay, so you can watch it on your own time while it's available. Let's see. Um, does it matter if your hashtags are in the description or as a comment? I don't think it matters. I like putting them in the comments when I can, just because I like my, I just like the way it looks. Um, if you do put them in the comments, make sure you do them like as soon as you post your photo. So just like um, if it was in your caption because you want Instagram and the hashtags to know about that as soon as possible. So I don't really think it matters. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> um, as long as they are there. There's so many different things. Um, one little tip that you can do when you're using hashtags is after you post, um, go to the hashtags that you've used, like actually look at them and engage with some posts within that tag. So that gives you a little bit more visibility too, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, does anyone have any more questions? I'll be live tomorrow too. I'll be live every day this week. Um, I have calendars up here. I'm not just staring off into the void. <laughs> um, <laughs> hashtag. What's a hashtag? You know what a hashtag is, Uncle Doug. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll be live every day this week. Next week or tomorrow I am talking about, I think I'm going to talk about Illustrator tomorrow. So, um, oh, who's my favorite Disney princess? In the 90s, it was Ariel. I was obsessed with Ariel. I can recite the entirety of The Little Mermaid to this day. Um, but I also adore Cinderella, and I think she is my favorite now. I like that she's a little bit sassy. And, um, yeah. I mean, I went to see The Little Mermaid in the theater, so... <laughs> That dates me for sure, but I'm okay with that. I, I loved her. I had everything. Everything was Ariel back in the day. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I will be on tomorrow talking about Illustrator. And so if you have any questions about that, I love you too. <laughs> um, then come ready and we'll talk about Illustrator and it'll be awesome. So, and check out Enable Pins 101. The course will be opening on Friday. I'm super excited. So if you're interested, um, definitely sign up for the webinar. I'll talk about it a little bit more at the webinar too. So if you have any questions about the course itself, I can answer those as well in the chat. And then I will be online tomorrow and I will see you then. Okay.